Oh, come, let us sing to our God. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We come, O oh God, into your presence with thanksgiving, rejoicing, and, and with songs of praise. Any announcements? Yes, um, a couple of things. Please send your offerings to the church at Canoe Camp Church Box, P.O. Box 428, Mansfield. Um, Linda Hughes uh, was displaced along with other tenants from an apartment fire on December 8th. Um, if you want to contribute to the fundraiser, please send a check to Canoe Camp Church with Mansfield Apartment Fire in the fund in the memo section. Also, Christmas Eve service. I'm going to ask everyone to mute themselves. I'm going to send, along with the bulletin, um, him, copies of the hymns that we'll be singing. But if everyone can mute themselves first, it'll make for a smoother recording. That's all I have. Any others? Listen to the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God, who will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be there. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Advent is about love. Francis Bacon once wrote, a crowd is not company, faces are but a gallery of pictures, and talk is but a tinkling symbol where there is no love. We are social beings. That is our blessing and our curse. We long for each other. We long to touch, to share, to bear some part of ourselves, to be understood, to invite others into our lives. We all long to lessen the loneliness that lurks in the background of even our most crowded moments. We are born alone and will ultimately die alone, but in, between the, but in between we desperately want to be known, to be understood, to belong, to find some kind of acceptance just as we are, some intimacy of soul. And so we reach out with fragile, delicate efforts of love. But love is dangerous. We can hurt each other. Hearts can be broken. Rejection can come. If you try to belong, you can be excluded, and that can hurt more than being alone. Love and the vulnerability that comes with it can be the riskiest business of all. But there is no love without such risks. Like hunger and thirst, the longing for love is implanted deeply within us. And God offers us many opportunities to care, to reach out, and to love.
endless gift of life that we can't be that can't be stored or locked away. Some part of the spirit that God has placed in us will die if we do not spend it or share it or give it away. Love is always a risk, but it is a risk upon which the very heart of our life depends. To love is to touch the heart of God. To look into the eyes of another and recognize our common soul is to see the face of God. Even to feel the ache of a broken heart, for love is to discover God's grace. Let us pray. Your love, O oh God, is great, and the risks you have taken were supreme. Teach us the ways of love and help us to walk in it. From the depths of your creating love, you made us male and female. Teach us the ways of love and help us to walk in it. In the goodness of your covenant, you created us a community of your love. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. In the fullness of time, you sent us Jesus, a man of love that risked all for the sake of the world. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. In your resurrection power, you have revealed your love to all humanity. Teach us the way of love and help us to walk in it. Help us, O oh God, to reveal your love as you discover anew the tremendous power of the Christmas story and meet again the Christ child born anew among us. Amen and amen.
Hey, Calvin. I'm sorry to interrupt. I can't hear you at all. Is anyone else having problems? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Josiah, can you see if you can adjust it? a God hug, and I was asking Shane if he would make a note of that when he puts it on the website, because I would like to use the title in, uh, later in another couple of weeks when I talk about the epiphany and the wise men. So we all need a big hug, I think, at this time of the year, especially uh, after a snowstorm and COVID. I think we were looking for some kind of hug somewhere. And sometimes a touch from our friends and family, and we can't do it. So thus, I see the Christmas story as a God hug. And so I'm going to read uh, Luke 1, 26 through 28, uh, 38. <clears throat> and in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee, to a virgin pled pledged to be married to a ma man named Joseph a descendant of David. A virgin, the virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled with his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. For he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. How, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your words to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. As I said, I titled this message, a God hug, because I think we as humanity have been looking for a God hug ever since uh, creation. And I'm going to go back uh, and, and I want to ask the question, why did we worship nature? If God was ever so present and around us and from creation and had a hand in everything, why did we miss out in this picture? Why did we worship the sun, S-U-N, rather than the S-O-N? Why, if God has such a, a, a loving relationship with humanity, did we veer off in some way? And my point today is that we never really had a chance, and that God never really touched us physically. He hovered over us and came close, but never gave us a hug. And I think we long for that hug from God, our creator, or this being that we call God in that heavenly realm. And so right from the very beginning of Genesis, it says the earth was empty and void, but God moved over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God moved and hovered over the waters. There was no direct contact in this respect. It hovered over. It didn't go down into, it didn't touch, it hovered over. And this is the premise of, of the whole way through creation. It never really touched creation. It was moved by a word and it, thus an action. And they said, and so through a series of separation, 
creation was made. There was a series of steps in which God was here and creation kept going down this way, away from. The guy said, let there be light. And he said, there's the light. And he separated the light from darkness. There is a separation between light and darkness. Another separation. And then there was a separation from the waters from the water. Two different types of water. A separation again. And then they said, let the water be dry, uh, water be water and, uh, and dry land. There's another separation again. There's just this constant separation away from God into a more physical nest and a more physical reality. But there is never, in my understanding, or the uh, way I'm going to look at it this morning, and never an actually where God sat down and hugged humanity and said, I love you, in a physical sense that we have longed for all our lives. And Christmas is the story of, of as close as we're going to get to a God hug, I believe, until we pass from this life to the next. And so later on, and after a few days, on the fourth day, he created the stars in the sky that were to light our way and uh, guide us and show us the seasons. But again, there was no direct contact with humanity, a hovering over or next to or spirit of, all the way down to where man is created. Even then, it says a likeness of, of, of their image. There still is not this human, human to God touch that we long for. We have, and, and even in, in the second chapter, or what is considered to be the second story of creation, which I think is more has to do with our beingness within ourselves, even the dust and the breath in which God has put into us was not a physical touch. The essence and the breath is not the longing of that physical touch in which we have. He planted this garden and he put us in there and even taking our helpmate, which I consider to be wisdom, she is still not a, a, an actual reality because we still all have our ribs. Us males all have our ribs. So that, that part of it still was not a physical touch in the way that we uh, consider the littleness of the story. I don't consider the littleness of the story. Yes, it's a, a wonderful story, but it has very deep spiritual implications. We long for that touch, and even in the Garden of Eden, we misbehave, and God kicked us out. So there we are. We're kicked out of the garden. We're on our own, and he says, basically, go fend for yourself. So we're left with what? A creation, a story of, of us here on this earth. I'll, I'll narrow it down to a story of... of Humanity living on an earth with the cycles and the seasons and the sun. So why wouldn't we look at the sun and worship the sun, the S-U-N, because it is the giver of light and life. We know and we can see that. We don't see a God who, uh, and a God's spirit necessarily in the way that we see the sun rising and cycling each day. And so why wouldn't we, seeing how we're left up to our own device in some ways, start worshiping the sun? Why wouldn't we, as the sustainer and the creator, see the sun as God or a God? The wheel of the year in which we talked about was the wreath as it circled around in its times and seasons. It was the way that we read uh, the seasons and the times, as it says in Genesis. But still, there is no direct contact with God and no God hug. We have learned to read the stars. The astrologists have read, read the stars and the movements, and we have calculated many different things throughout our uh, uh, lifetimes. Our ancestors have done that. We have stepped on that in some ways and kind of denied it. It became our way of living. Our ancestors and our forefathers understood the world through nature. Not through a living God who has created and is off somewhere that we don't understand, in which we don't have no physical contact with. We have a physical contact with this world, and thus the rise of nature worship. 
We have looked at a way that the evergreen tree became a symbol of eternal life because it never died. So why wouldn't you look at the, the evergreen tree or what is now our Christmas tree and say, that is a, a, an idea of eternal life. It's not that nature didn't show a God. I'm simply saying that we didn't have this physical touch which we long for in our lives. The winter solstice became the most important day of the wheel of the year because it was the darkest night in which you turned out the light and then you, it was, and the light was turned on in the morning and the fire was rekindled and it brought back the light for the next whole year, the giver of light. So the winter solstice became, in my understanding, and in my limited understanding of paganism and our forefathers' understanding of nature worship, the most important day. It brought back light and life. And without that, there would be no life. If it stayed dark forever, there would be no life. We would cease to exist. So the Yule season became the most important time of the year. The light is the, actually the closest that we can get to a God hug. The light and love of God. But still, it is not what we long for. We need a God hug, especially this time of year with everything that's going on. And I think we do, we long for that no matter what. And Christmas is a celebration, I believe, or I want to see it this way this morning, as a spiritual God hug, a caring for humanity in a way that was up until this point was not given. Yes, there was uh, experiences, there are stories of various experiences, but that was only limited to the individual and a few. It was still not a physicalness of God coming down and giving humanity a hug. We longed for that hug. As uh, the reading says that uh, love is, is, is that uh, treacherous thing in which we have to step out and we have to uh, uh, kind of put ourselves out in a dangerous position. So I wonder, I guess I'll ask a silly question. Is God afraid to love humanity in a physical way? I don't know. I have a lot of questions in my life. So I want to look at the text, for instance, and, and talk about Mary for a second. I don't believe for a second that Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary and Joseph were dumb individuals. I think they were very smart individuals. They were the spiritually intelligent people and understood the times and the seasons. Mary, the idea of a virgin in, in, in the uh, pagan understanding is a self-made woman who is, is com a complete woman who doesn't necessarily need a man. We understand a virgin as a silly little girl who, who uh, is, is off looking for a man and wants some kind of um, a subtle down in their life. But a virgin in the old days did not mean that. Now, I'm not saying women are silly little uh, whatever. I'm simply, uh, it's a dangerous territory for me to venture into. I'm not implying that at all. I think women are smart. Don't get, uh, I, I don't want you thinking that. But generally speaking, I think in the past, us men, never mind. I'm going to stop before I get any deeper. <laughs> Anyway, it certainly did not mean what we imply it today, that it didn't have a, a woman with no sexual relations. It meant that the woman was a smart woman. And I think Mary was a very smart and educated woman, along with Joseph, along with Zechariah, along with Elizabeth. They were not uneducated people. I believe that Mary was barren. I, I've said this before. Elizabeth was barren, and I think Mary came from a long line of barren women in the Old Testament who, who were, in a way, a self-made woman. They were not looked upon in society as being uh, normal because the, the societal Jewish thing, and along with other cultures, it was a woman was to have offspring. And so if a woman was barren, she had to figure out a different way of life because what man would want her because she can't have children. So 
I believe that Mary came from a long line of barren women because the Holy Spirit hovered over top of her and she became pregnant, as happened many times before, if you read in the Old Testament. The very uh, uh, line of uh, Jewish Israelite people came from Sarai, from Sarah, who was a barren woman. And so a blessed people comes from a blessed woman. So I believe that to be true. And I, I, I believe also, at least at this point, as my idea I'm going to put forward, that Joseph was marrying her because it was a social thing to do and it gave Mary an uprightness or a correctness in society in that day. So I find this to be rather interesting. We have a hard time understanding the supernatural or the spiritual. We were never shown it in a way, I believe, that it was understandable. Again, God was off in some place uh, for us, from our perspective, was not, did not come down and stand, does not come down and stand in front of us and give us a hug and say, look, I'm real. So therefore, we have this idea, we long for a hug from God. And Jesus coming down to here, which is a, uh, a, a supernatural event from our perspective, but I don't think it is from, from the perspective of other realms, from the heavenly realm. They don't necessarily see this as a supernatural occurrence. They may or may not, but we see it as that. And we have a hard time understanding it because we grew up and our ancestors understood nature worship. We saw the things that we worshiped most times. Yes, we have overlaid our Christian ways and our thoughts over top of these pagan ways. And in some effort, we have even stepped on them and tried to get rid of them. I think, and I believe we should embrace them as our past, whatever they are, whatever culture you came from, around the globe, doesn't matter. Every culture did, uh, worship in some way nature, from Africa to the, uh, the Asian continent, to South America, to uh, uh, the First Nation people, Every one of us have a, a line and a descendant from nature, nature worship. We're not unique. We all are in this together. I think that if we understand our past, it helps us to understand the supernatural event of Christmas and the God hug that he was sent in the, in the, the birth and the life of Jesus Christ and the message that he brought to this world. And with that, I'm going to say amen. Now to the words of the elements of communion. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said to his disciples, eat all of you, for this is my body broken for all. May your sins be forgiven. And again, Jesus took the chalice and he poured wine into it and he, and he said to his disciples, drink all of you. For this is my life poured out and given for all, a new life. Help us, O oh God, to live this new life. We are commanded by Jesus as often as we eat this meal to remember and to reflect on God's goodnesses and mercies. In God's Holy Spirit, we are to share this meal together as we gather until the time we can eat this meal, each one of us, 
face to face with our Lord.
Come now to our joys and concerns. I think the future looks uh, uh, brighter with a vaccine and hopefully we'll go move into the future in a uh, better way. I pray that everybody will find it in their hearts to participate in what is best in society. I have a joy. Go ahead. It was a very big blessing for Canoe Camp when Shane came to us. And now he makes it possible for me and Annie and others, Sharon, uh, <laughs> others that I see to be with, to be together Sunday morning. Thank you so much, Shane. You've mm -hmm. been a very big blessing to Canoe Camp. Very true. Very and the true. bulletin. The Thank bulletin. you. Others? Well, even though we got way too much, I love snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this much. Not this much. Not this much. Oh. Well, I don't have to shovel it, but I do have a beautiful view out my window. Good. That's good. Yeah, I had uh, my neighbors help me out, and Harry had a snowblower, and thank God, because I went out there and looked, and it's like the snow's up to my shoulders, because all the stuff that was piled in from the road, you know? I'm like, how in the heck am I going to do this? He said, get out of the way. Just go back in the house. I'll have it done by the end of the day. Don't take me a while. So thank God for snowblowers and thank God for Harry. Harry Spencer. So that's a yeah, real blessing. And my nephew came down and dug me dug my car out. So that was good. Well, I don't have a driver's license anymore. And I think my car is gone now, isn't it? Shane, do you know if my car is gone? Josiah, do you know if my car is gone? Yes, it is. Good. I want it to be used. That's good. Hmm. Prayers for those who are traveling through all this snow and stuff. Yeah. We're expecting ice. My understanding is coming up this week. Yeah. Calvin, be careful. Absolutely. We don't have to worry about no white Christmas apply here, but it's wet. We have rain. People that live in Jackson should get up here and visit us and see a white Christmas. But most people say they don't care about any white Christmas. <laughs> well, it is beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful I, out. I, I know. It's going to take months for it to melt. Sure. Well, I'm so glad I get to see Annie Sunday morning. You're too, Jeannie. Well, I've got a niece and nephew that are coming back from, they've been stuck out west. They, he drives truck out there, you know, cross country. And they have made it to Texas. They're supposed to be in Virginia um, by Wednesday. I mean, I don't know. You know, they've got three kids at home they haven't seen in three weeks because of all this mess with the snow and everything. Um, anyway, just the names of Megan and, and Clayton Forbes. I was just worried about them getting back home safe. You know, anybody that's out traveling in this mess all throughout the United States, I just have grave concerns for all of them. Well, I'm glad for the technology that lets me see my kids in South Carolina, including my grandson who turned two on the 13th this month, and my daughter in New Orleans where it's not snowing. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> That's good that you can do that. I'm glad for the technology. Yeah. 
I get to see little Ellis run around and blow me a kiss. <laughs> he goes. Well, Sydney sent me a picture of uh, Levi seeing Santa Claus through the window of the car, but cell. Oh. <laughs> and he's just kind of looking at him like, I don't know what to think of this person. <laughs> But he well, did. I hope by, hope by next year, things can seem a little more normal. Oh, another thing, tomorrow we stop being sequestered in our rooms over here and we get to eat in the dining room. Excellent. Huh? Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, real people, a, a table. <laughs> a table. <laughs> yeah, great. That's good news. An improvement. Yeah. So have they talked? Have they have they talked anything about? Uh, well, for instance, Broad Acres getting the shot, giving you any kind of date. I think it's. Um, I think staff is first in line, and mm -hmm. nursing home residents are next. So should be happening pretty soon. But no dates. They. Hmm. I don't know if if they know. I don't know. I don't think they know. Well, my uh, one granddaughter get the right one. Katie <laughs> uh, works over to the green home. She's come down with COVID. Oh, so, oh. so she's homesick hmm. right now. Hmm. She says she's not doing too bad. So good. Hopefully. Where does she think she was exposed? At work. Really? Yeah. Well, mm. once it hits the green home, that's terrible. It's gonna. Well, here I know they check the staff, take temperatures and everything every time they come in and go out. Yeah, but it, it doesn't, you can have it and not have a temperature, you know? I mean, it just, yeah. so insidious, it's just, it just goes through the air. It's just there. It's no yep. one person's real fault or blame or whatever. It's just, you just don't know. You be totally asymptomatic and have it and then pass it on to everybody else. So that's the only right. way you can no tell symptoms. is to do the test. Yeah. So are you and Gary all better now? Huh? Everybody. Are you and Gary all better now? Is Gary better? How We're both pretty good. It's just, the things you're used to doing that didn't tire you out now tire you out. Oh, yeah. It's, I guess that hangs on sometimes for months. So, but Gary is feeling better. He's feeling a lot better. This last week has seen a great improvement in him. Oh, good. Good. That's good. Bob and Carol, you're staying well? So far. Keep it up. My concern is, I know this is a little, you know, I have a kitty cat and a little feral cat that comes out here and feeds every night. You know, I have a little bowl, which I'm not supposed to put food out for him. I understand <laughs> that. You know, man's still found very greatly on that, but he's been out here with Peyton, you know, and everything. But these cat, you know, these animals aren't getting any food. She hasn't had come, can't get through the snow. And my brother said up there, you know, up on top of the hill, that he got 40 inches up there. Said the deer are eating the bark off the trees and they're jumping. They're going like that because they can't go through the snow. And if you get ice and rain on top of all this coming this week and then it freezes, it's just, you know, the wildlife and uh, the squirrels and everything are, you know, it's just... Uh, um, you worry about them, you know, God's creatures. So it's going to be very tough on them. Yeah. And you can't put bird seed out there because you can't even, I mean, I threw some bread, stale bread out there the other day, but the birds aren't even coming around. I don't know whether, yeah, this is a mess. I don't know how these people do it up in Canada and they have six feet of snow all the time. I don't know how the hell they do it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to swear, but. Um, oh. Up in Watertown, where usually they have two feet mm. when we have two inches, they had less 
than a foot of snow. I think actually only a very few inches of snow when we had this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, life is weird <laughs> and the weather is weirder. <laughs> Calvin, how have you been making out? Are the roads okay? Are you driving through the week? I, I made out just fine. I drove around it and I uh, was up in Massachusetts on Friday. So I, I have been blessed. Good. Good to hear. Yeah, we worry about you, Calvin. Don't want anything to get yes, in your way. I've, I've thought about him being on the road all week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any others before I go into the pastor's prayer? I want to. I'm going to use a, uh, a winter solstice prayer. Gavin. What? Gavin. Would you remember that the um, the uh, all the people involved with with the stimulus package. Um, let's hope that some decision is made very soon, <laughs> like today or tomorrow. Uh, are you on the uh, uh, health, money for the health stimulus? Uh, 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 yeah. yeah, the whole package. <laughs> let's yeah. Make that yeah. Oh, wait, Rose. Come on. Okay. Join me now in prayer. Deep night, dark night, night of the longest sigh, soulful night, sacred night, night of the longest dreams, cold night, holy night, night of the unflaring desires, womb of the world, birther of hope, bringer of peace and goodwill, prayer and prayer for all good things, that suffering will all will end, that life will thrive and generosity reign in the hearts of all humankind, that joy will rise and children will fly on wings of prosperity. Oh, hear our plea this silent night when the moon is around in the sky, when hopes are high and eyes are wide with delight. May love prevail tonight and always. Lead us back to our source. May we dance with the dark without hesitation or fear. A savor her promise of plenty. Deep night, dark night, night of the longest sigh. May our weary hearts stay vigilant and receptive to all that is loving and dear. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. Yes, we are in a stressed time, not only in our churches, in our families, and as individuals. Each of us have needs and concerns. Be with us as we journey through this time of the year with COVID, we have a change of government, we have a lot of changes on top of a major winter storm. Protect and watch over us. And we're thankful for those who have helped many in this time of snow uh, disaster. Be with the churches as we reach out as best we can. Oh God, we need a hug, a great hug of love and help us to share that love. Be with this nation as it is making decisions. We are changing leaderships. Lord, just be with each one. Lord, be with the money that we are uh, the package that we are looking for our government to help uh, people who are uh, close to losing their homes, if not already, who don't have uh, food insecurity. Lord, there's many needs. Lord, help us to look out for one another. Help us in the government to look and to do what is right for people, not only for an ideology. We are a nation that should care for one another, no matter who we are, no matter what color we are, whatever sexuality we are, or we should be caring for one another. Help this stimulus package to pass, and may it reach where it's supposed to, and do the best good. 
There has been various fires around, people who, in this time of the year who have lost everything. Lord, just be with them as they uh, deal with this great loss. Lord, I have lost a, a pastor friend, Isabella. She is now in your presence. I'm very thankful for the time that we had together. And I will miss the free dinners that he always gave me and paid for at Trump World. Lord, be with him and his family at this time. Linda, Amber, and Billy, Lord, they're struggling to deal with life. It has a lot of issues. Lord, I'm sure Amber is busy in each one of them. Grant her patience, grant her stability, and help her not to stress out. Be with Jerry wherever he is at and his family. I'm glad to hear that Connie and Gary are doing better. There are many people who are going through this time. I know some friends of mine who have COVID who are struggling to get through it. Or just be with them as they deal with it. Or to remember the animals in the deep snow. Yeah, they're eating bark and they're barely surviving. Somehow you look out for them and some will die. Or just be with them as they year. We're thankful for neighbors helping neighbors this season of not only the snowstorm but in food. Karen who mentioned her relatives and family friends who are traveling who are truck drivers trying to get home. Or just be with them. Jeannie who is and Annie who is, and many others at this time who are using technology. We are thankful for the technology that is brought forth. Each one who works hard to get it to work. We're thankful that this time of season of remembering others. Help us to give one another a, a, maybe a virtual hug of some sort. We can't do it physically or we're not supposed to. Or somehow help us to be a community. We need one another. God, give us a hug. We ask this in Jesus' name. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have against us. Maybe from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now for the benediction. Oh God, give us a hug, and may we share that hug in the best way that we can. Go in peace. Amen.